Hey there, welcome to the channel. Now, if you've watched my past couple of videos, you know that I'm super excited about this book, Gluten-Free Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day. It's really good bread from what I've made so far, and I wanted to share some of the recipes with you guys. So today, we're gonna be making a gluten-free boule, which boule is a French word for ball. So it's gonna be a round artisan loaf that you'll see on the cover here, actually. I think it is these right here. So we're gonna make that today. I've got a few more videos I wanna make, and if you guys wanna see more, then I can do more of them as far as maybe some of the other styles of breads that they have, like whole grain breads or enriched breads, which would be like hala and stuff like that. But for now, we're gonna make this one. Keep your eyes peeled because I'm gonna try to get a couple videos done at once and just split them up so you guys can see a couple different breads. So you may find that you get a little sneak peek of one of the other breads I'm doing. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let's get started. So before we start shaping our gluten-free bread dough, let's talk about equipment needed for this recipe and lots of the recipes in the book. One of the things you're gonna need is a baking stone. This is gonna help that bread get crisp. It's gonna maintain the heat better in the oven as far as what the bread's baking on. So if you don't have one of those, I will double check the book and see if there's other suggestions on what to use. Um, but they're not super expensive and I can link below to any equipment I think you guys might need and, and find something that's a reasonable price and it's, um, that looks like a good one for you guys. So I'll link to any of that stuff below, but you are going to need one of those. You're also going to need some kind of metal pan because in the oven setup, if I'm pointing in the right direction to where the picture is, you want your baking stone in the middle rack and then you want the empty broiler pan or other metal pan on the rack below. What we're gonna do with that is add a cup of super hot water before we close our oven after we put the dough in and that's gonna help that crust get crisp like artisan breads that you're familiar with. The other thing you're gonna need is the book suggests a pizza peel, which I have no use for honestly that I can think of. So instead of that, you want some kind of flat pan that you can put the bread on because I'm gonna make the bread on parchment paper and let it rise. So I do it right on that pan and then I slide it off into the oven onto the baking stone. So I'm gonna use one of these pizza screens, but another thing that works really well is any kind of cookie sheet that you can maneuver, you just flip it upside down and then with the parchment paper, it slides right off onto the baking stone and you're good to go. Now I think it's time that we shape this dough and if there's anything I forgot, I will definitely talk about it in the video. Okay guys, so here is our gluten-free bread dough. I made this a few days ago. It is good for up to 10 days in the refrigerator. So this is gonna give me multiple loaves of bread or types of bread. And I'm gonna make a couple today and then I'll either save this for another day this week or I'll you know, do a third loaf today. But today we're making the gluten-free artisan bread bowl. So I am gonna use a scale to measure out my dough. We're gonna need a pound of this dough, which is about the size of a grapefruit and that says this in the book, but I'm not so sure about that yet for me as far as eyeballing it, so I'm gonna measure it by weight. I do have my cookbook near me because until I make a recipe a bunch of times, I don't always have it memorized, so bear with me if there's a pause. So I'm gonna put my parchment paper on here. I am gonna tear it out just because it does have a little bit of weight to it. And I wet my fingertips just to help me get the bread out, but I've got a measuring cup full of water here and I am gonna be using this to help shape. So I'm gonna dampen my hand a little bit. Pull this up here so you can see. I'm gonna kind of go in it like a claw because I don't want to disturb the air bubbles in the yeast. I don't want this to deflate any more than it's going to if I can help it. So I just kind of go in and we'll see how much this weighs. I just kind of scoop some out. It is sticky. 
We are at about almost nine and a half ounces. So let's get some more. Almost 14 ounces. Let's see how close I am. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I'm just over a pound. So we need to get it shaped. So I'm gonna move it off the scale and over to my pizza screen so I can get it shaped out. This goes back in the fridge, loosely covered until you need it for the next loaf of bread. Okay guys. Okay, so I'm gonna shape this dough and I'm kind of at an angle here. So hopefully you guys can see everything. I've got my hands are damp. I've got more water if I need to. And back here I've got a bowl and that's what I'm gonna cover this with. If you don't have a bowl big enough or don't want to do that, you could also use a, a little piece of plastic wrap and loosely cover it to let it rise some more and come to room temp. So let's shape it out. There is no gluten in this, so it is not going to stretch. So we just want to try to shape it into the bowl or ball shape because we want it to bake up. So you can flatten it a little bit, but be careful because we want all those air bubbles in there to stay. And I kind of rub my fingertips over it to make it super smooth. There are tips in the book that if you bake this off and it's a little denser than you like, uh, we're going to rest this for 60 minutes before we put it in the oven, but it suggests you can rest it up to 90 minutes for a lighter loaf. So if you make this recipe and are finding that, then go ahead and try the 90 minute rest time. And guys, this only took me a minute or two to smooth out and shape. So you can see it really didn't take that long. And if we're making the dough ahead of time, that's lots of time that we're saving because we've made the flour mix in the dough earlier. All right, so this is not a perfect circle. It's pretty round, but it's definitely not perfect on this side. It's a little flatter, but that's just something that is going to take me more practice with. I'm not going to worry about it. It's still going to bake up. So now that I've got this shaped, again, I need to rest it. I've got my bowl. I'm gonna rest it for 60 minutes under the bowl. We're gonna need to preheat our oven ahead of time. We want our oven nice and hot when this is ready to go in the oven. So it's gonna take a good 20 to 30 minutes to preheat your oven. We wanna make sure it's hot and ready to go. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 450 degrees about a half hour into my resting time for the dough. Once the resting time is over, we need to do a couple things to the dough just before we pop it in the oven. So we'll be right back with the next step. So it's time to bake off our gluten-free bowl. So let's see if we can tell any difference. It hasn't really risen a whole lot. This was typical of the last time I made it as well, but I can smell that yeast, which is great. I like that I know that it's working. I've got my gluten-free bread flour blend that we made the other day. I've got some of it. And if you didn't have any of that mixed, you could use white rice flour, but I want to sprinkle it liberally across the top. And if you sprinkle high, you'll get a more even distribution of the flour. I'm going to brush it a little bit too, I think just with my fingertips. Now I've got a serrated knife. I want to wet the knife and then you've got a couple ways you can do this. We can do a crisscross, so we can just do a cross. We can do a tic-tac-toe pattern or we could do a fan. I am going to probably do the tic-tac-toe pattern, I think, because last time I did the cross and it came out well, so let's try a new pattern for me anyway. I don't know if you guys saw the other one or not. I'll put a picture up of the other one. So let me wet my knife.
What these cuts are gonna do is they're gonna help the bread split where we make the cuts and not split in some weird place that we don't want. So we're controlling that. So you want about a half inch cut or depth wise. And if you have to re-wet your knife, you can. And now our bread is ready to go in the oven. Again, 450 degrees. This is gonna cook for about 45 minutes. After the first 20, I should be able to slide out this piece of parchment paper and that's gonna help the bottom crisp up more. So I'm gonna do that. Our bread's gonna come out of the oven and cool completely before we slice it or it's gonna affect the texture of bread. It's still baking as it cools. So as much temptation as you have to cut into this, let it cool completely. Also, you might see that little sneak peek at one of the other recipes because I'm gonna get that in the oven at the same time. And I wanna show you as best I can what we need to do when we put it in the oven. Let's get this baked. So I've got one cup of hot tap water and I just let it run as hot as it gets and then fill up my measuring cup. And once I put my bread in the oven, before I shut the door, I'm gonna pour this in that metal broiler pan on the bottom and that's gonna create steam and it's gonna help our bread get that crusty outside that we like so much. So here's our gluten-free bowl that we are getting ready to put into the oven. We wanna slide it off of this pizza screen using the parchment paper onto the stone. We're gonna add our water to the pan down below and then shut the door. We're gonna bake this for 20 minutes. Then, because I want a crispier crust on the bottom as well, I'm gonna slide out this parchment paper and bake it for the remaining 25 minutes. And then we're gonna let it cool completely before we slice into it. So here is our baked gluten-free boule and it just came out of the oven so i'm gonna hold it with the tongs but you can see how high it is you can also see that it's not totally round but that's okay so it split here and here and across but this other one did not split should be fine it's just not as defined i'm maybe i needed to go a little bit deeper so now we need to cool it before we can eat it so i'm gonna let it cool for a couple hours and then we'll give it a taste so it's been a few hours and I've let our gluten-free boule cool. And this is what it looks like. It's about the size of my hand. So it's not a super large loaf, but I did give one little cut in it. And let's see if I can get you guys so you can see this. You can see it's nice and airy inside. It is a little dense. And one of the things the book says that you can let it rest longer to help with that. So this was about an hour rest. You could rest up to 90 minutes and hopefully that would alleviate some of that denseness if you didn't like that texture. The other thing is I've only made this a couple times now. So you know as well as I do, if you've tried to bake any kind of gluten-free bread that it's definitely trial and error, learning what works, even with a cookbook that looks like it has amazing results or does have amazing results. As far as I'm concerned, the taste of this is great. I will work on the texture as I make it, hopefully, to improve it even more to what I want. So let's put it down the board and give it a cut and give it another taste so you guys can see a little bit more of it. You can hear how crusty it is. It's got a good bend to it. And I think I'm gonna eat this little piece of end. Spread some butter on it. Let's give it a taste. That little bit of water that we put in the roasting pan underneath the baking stone really does help crisp this up. It gives us a crunchy, chewy outside and keeps the inside more tender. 
it tastes like bread. For me, not being gluten-free and having something taste like bread is good. But for someone like Tara who can't have gluten and taste a bread that actually tastes like bread is wonderful. Guys, I like the texture. I like the taste. It's not super hard to make. It's a learning curve like any other kind of gluten-free baking that you're doing. I hope you like this video. Please leave me any comments below or what kind of recipes you want me to make with this bread dough from the book. I do have a few more that I'm in the middle of filming for you guys, but put your requests down below. We'll see if we can make those happen. Thanks for watching. Give this recipe a try. Again, the book is gluten-free artisan bread in five minutes a day. I'll link below to everything you need. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.